We have three scoring judges at ringside who are Henk Adrians from Holland, Roy Francis from England, and Paul Thomas, also from England. Finally, when the action commences, the referee this evening is the outstanding Mr. Larry O'Connell from Kent, England. This is Championship Boxing, introducing to you firstly, boxing out of the red corner, wearing the black colored shorts with the yellow trim. At the way he scaled, nine stone one and one quarter pounds, or 127 and one quarter US pounds. His record, 24 contests, 17 wins. Seven of those wins coming by way of knockouts, five defeats and two draws. He hails from St. Petersburg in Russia. Would you please welcome to Glasgow, Nikolai Eremeyev. And opposing him, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing his traditional and familiar gold-colored shorts with a white trim. At the way he scaled, nine stone three and one half pounds, or 129 and one half US pounds. He's undefeated in 10 professional contests, 10 wins, eight of those wins coming by way of knockout. He comes to the ring as the current IBF Intercontinental Champion from Edinburgh in Scotland. We present amazing Alex Arba. The referee, Mr. Larry O'Connell, will now give his final instructions to both boxers. This is 12 three-minute rounds for the vacant WBO Intercontinental Super Featherweight title. I'll swear to you both in the dressing room, you both know the rules. Good luck to both, may the best man win. God bless. Tricky situation here for Edinburgh's brilliant Alex Arthur. Was expecting fellow unbeaten Scott Willie Lemon to be battling out the vacant British title here tonight. But a perforated eardrum put pay to Lemon's night. And in a sense, Arthur's too, who said the news was like going through a divorce. But he's always been calm, and this is a test of how well he settled into the game. A doggedly strong replacement in experienced Nikolai Eremeyev. And Jim, Alex mustn't take anything for granted here. No, this little fellow, as I said, as he was coming into the ring, he's much tougher than he looks. Very experienced, knows the tricks here. There's no reason why Ali should lose tonight. He has all the, the physical advantages, but he has to, to impose those advantages. He has to take his time. Just uh, don't be over enthusiastic at the start. Try a couple of rounds in the bank. Just relax. Like, just remember this little fellow is tougher than he looks. He's hardly put a foot wrong so far, Arthur. Seems to have every single skill, the tight guard, the big long jab, the fast right hand and the hooks. But Eremeyev is a real battler. He took Gavin Reese, the Newbridge prospect, a full 12 rounds in Cardiff last year. And everybody thought Reese would dispatch him within a couple of rounds. Eremeyev proved us all wrong. He may look like a student or a librarian, but this is one pretty rough and tough customer. But is he just too small for a big super featherweight like Arthur? I think the main thing is Arthur just doesn't look for the powerful shots until he's found a range and he starts landing regularly. This little fellow's tricky, he's experienced, and he's actually started quicker than I expected. Alec hasn't uh, managed to pin him down at all in the first round. That was a good body shot he's just got home with. A few he more wins, of those. He winks there, Eremeyev, as that left hook went in underneath his right elbow. And a good right hand over the top, too, after putting on the pressure in this opening round. Eremeyev really just a blown-up super bantamweight. And this is going to be very, very hard for him. Just dropped his hands there. 
at the force of the right hand that didn't even really land from Arthur. Who settled so quickly. Isn't he professional? Yeah, he's taken out of me a little, little bit of time to go over that body shot. That really winded him, and since then, Arthur's taken over the round. It was fairly close up until then. Arthur hadn't really pinned him down. And that body shot just took some of the wind out of his sails, given Arthur that little split second longer than the punch is he's taken advantage of it. Good quality start from Arthur. <laughs> Hope you can settle in for a night to remember with us. Scott Harrison in his biggest fight, Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson all coming up tonight on Skybox Office. If you have ordered this special event and experience any difficulty, the number to call 08705 800 888. 08705 800 888. Welcome back to the Brayhead Arena. And there's the corner of amazing Alex Arthur with Peter Harrison and Billy Nelson. And what a wonderful start he made. That's a nice leading right hand. Uh, you know, just into the first minute or so, but he, he was struggling to pin him down for the first uh, couple of minutes or so, but that's, the, that's understandable. But as soon as that body shot landed, that just took the wind out of enemy seals. We're looking for more of those. Second round, and the IBF Intercontinental Champion, Alex Arthur, in the gold trunks. Boxing for the vacant WBO Intercontinental Crown 2. Just stepping stones, really, as he looks for that British title shot, which will surely come up in the autumn. Nikolai Eremeyev from Zlatus, the 27-year-old, who's boxed at a pretty high level and did take Philip Undu six rounds. And Undu is a world-class super featherweight. So if Arthur can improve on that result here, well, that would be extremely interesting. The body shots could be the key. Arthur has uh, begun throwing bursts of punches already. I usually call for bursts of punches in a fight, but this time I would prefer to see him just single jabs, just to solve this little fellow out for a round or so, but that was a lovely burst to come away with then. Aramev, who's only been stopped twice in a long career that started in 1996 when he was thrown in in the south of France to a really hard prospect, Luis Navarro. And he's never had it easy. I just like to see Arthur maybe single and double punches in the early stages. This little fella's quick, he's nifty. You don't want to be wasting steam on punches that are not landing or punches that have been partially blocked. There's an excellent job after. Just wants to get behind it here. That lovely straight right lead. Those are the kind of punches we want. Long range shots. Don't let this fellow buzz around you too close. That right hand seems to hurt Aramev, who's buzzing in and out like a bee with quick whipping shots, but none of them having any effect on Alex Arthur, who hammers home another right hand. See, this is the range we want to see after the first couple of rounds. Jeremy, if it's harmless at this range, he has to get close when he, he ducks and dives and bobs and weaves, brings punches from, from unusual angles. At this range, Arthur can control things. Look at the jab there. Settling down so well into the professional game, having been an outstanding amateur who won the Commonwealth Gold and made the quarterfinals of the World Championships. All that experience traveling around the world. And there's a cut to the left eye of Eremeyev to add to his problems. He just can't get into this. So the jab from Arthur's really working well. He's timing it well. His hands are up nice and tight. He, he looks like a, a solid pro already. He's just a kid just starting off. But lots of natural talent. Two rounds for nil. For Alex Arthur, the lovely fighter, such a character, well-spoken, outgoing, pleasure to work with. 
And Peter Harrison there, Scott's father. Very happy. See, this range, Jeremy, I just can't get started. Your Harrison can really dominate. So this is a long fight. This little fellow is experienced over the 12 rounds distance. So the main thing, Arthur, it doesn't expect a quick stoppage. This could be a long night. So make sure there's plenty in the tank if this fight goes into the later rounds. And if he keeps landing as accurate as that, uh, we could see a stoppage. Well, here's the round that Alex Arthur really burst onto the scene with a stoppage of Laszlo Bogner back in November last year, the man that had given Michael Gomez two such hard fights and Arthur dealt with him with ease. And he's dealing with Nikolai Eremeyev with confidence and cool boxing behind the tight guard. Eremeyev, who got a draw with one of our top ten featherweights, Roy Rutherford, over here before and took Gavin Reese the distance. He's a pretty decent operator and will be in there fighting until there's no more left in him. You can be sure of that. Well, he's shown that in the past. That's why I feel, although Arthur's looking really good at the moment, this could be a long fight. As they're trying the body shot again, that would certainly get the job half done. If they could split some of these body shots in and behind that elbow. I'm sure our old friend Philip Fondue in the Aramaev corner has told him to keep the right elbow well tucked in. Arthur's so good at is whipping in that left hook to the body and following up with a straight right hand. And his speed is very effective. Aramaev already looking like a troubled man. The weight of these punches the size difference in there. They look a weight apart just on their physical stature, Jim. Yeah, and then the fact that Arthur is always there right in front of him. He's not throwing punches, he's threatening to throw, he's never giving him a second to, to catch his breath. And over the and in the course of a long fight, that really saps the energy from you. If you feel you're under pressure, you're always your back's always to the wall. And that's how it's beginning to look already. Beautiful left hand going in from Arthur. Looking for the uppercuts. And Aramaev bravely tries to dig in but oh this is so hard for him so that was one of the few times when Eremia was trying to make a miss without coming back with counters that shows the impact the punches are having he's wants to get out of there at times try and catch himself a breather Arthur's not allowing that he's coming at two days notice Nikolai Eremia fit strong determined and uh, can Easily box is very capable, but you're talking about one of boxing's young stars here, Alex Arthur. Great uppercut. It's beginning to work him over now, Adam. At times when Ermia should be grabbing hold of Arthur, nullifying the work, but that's not his style. Too much courage at times. Big round for Arthur. He's not strong enough, Aramaev, and there's a big smile from Alex Arthur. Oh, oh, well, look at those jabs landed. You can see the quality there coming out from Arthur. And Aramea's not a bad fighter. He just can't get started here. Arthur hasn't allowed him into the fight. And now he's thinking defensively. When he came out the first couple of rounds, he was thinking about how to get close, how to get his punches off. But now all he's thinking now is how to avoid these punches. He's not thinking about coming back with counters. And that's the first sign, really, that he knows he's struggling. And Arthur never giving him one second. So he knows his back's to the wall all the while, and it's beginning already to grind him down. I mean, yes, Aramaev is the underdog. But you've got to remember, Arthur's not fighting for the British title. He'd have been gutted about that. And he's up against a man who just went in with the current European bantamweight champion. Took him 12 rounds, Spender Barsi. And is a very strong European man, but 
could Arthur just be a real golden nugget for British boxing? Romeo's quick hands are the only possible danger to Arthur, who's just trying to brush them aside. You know, the only chance the enemy would have if he had the strength to back Arthur up because he's really rolling here, really, so he's in a lovely groove. So Eremi would have to be pushing him back and, and he hasn't the strength to do that. Really beginning to struggle now. Not just an intelligent man out of the ring, Alex Arthur, you get the feeling, but a very clever boxer inside it. Where he doubles up there to body and head and keeps his composure at all times. We saw that against Snarsky, didn't we? Yeah, that's it. Maybe he knows things are going his way. He's, uh, he's not in any hurry. Just keep doing the, the right things. Everything's falling into place. As we said earlier, Eremir will not give up. To get him out of there, Arthur will have to punch him out of there. Still pretty light on his feet, Eremir. Don't know what they feed him back in Zlauthaus in Russia. But it must be something pretty good. right to the top of the head and the quickness of the uppercut again from Arthur. Jeremy is very slow now to get his chin out of harm's way. He's been caught cleanly. He's usually quite difficult to catch cleanly in the early stage of a fight, but Arthur has sobbed him out straight away. Yes, Gavin Rees tried to punch Eremeyev from pillar to post the opening three or four rounds of their fight but didn't have a plan B and you get the feeling that Arthur is a man capable of dealing with whatever Aramea will throw at him and coming back with far superior work see this actually traded with him and tried to outstrength him whereas Arthur he has the tactics and he's trying to dominate him not quite dominating him as yet but really is in top here as well in the driver's seat they just walk into a right hand Alex Arthur, as he did against Darius Snarsky, and he was telling me about that, that he didn't mind taking a few of Snarsky's punches because he knew he couldn't really hit. But um, I have to see if that is a worry. And uh, is there a slight nick? Little nick on his eye. Just, just on that, that corner, yeah. yes, of Arthur's left eye from that right hand. Well, if he has a weakness, maybe that's it. But everything very much under control. Four rounds out of four. Yeah, see everything controlled and steady, and that's what's grinding Eremiev down. He never gets a chance to get his breath, doesn't get a break from the action. As soon as he moves off from one attack, after right on top of him again. No, nothing erratic, everything nice and controlled. Perfect performance, really, for a 12-round championship fight. It looks as though he could go on like this all night long. That's what he did against Darius Snarsky, finally catching up with the strong, stubborn Polish man in the tent. Here's the strong, very, very brave Russian Nikolai Eremeyev, but he's slow to get up off his stool for the fifth round. And I wonder how much more resilience he could offer. This Edinburgh cult figure now. Arthur wants to take boxing to the Edinburgh Castle. That's his dream. And uh, said he could get three or 4,000 fans. It's easy to see why people will pay to see a man of this quality. The gold trunks, remember of Arthur. See, sometimes we talk about prospects and we worry when they step up in class if they don't have the punch, don't need a knockout punch, but the punch to discourage the other fellow. And that's what Aramiev is lacking here. He doesn't have the punch to, to keep Arthur thinking. You know, put him on the, the defensive a little bit. He hasn't hurt him, hasn't it? Nothing that he's hit Arthur with has bothered him in the slightest. He's coming right through the punches and just taking control. You really have to hit hard enough to trouble the other field. Don't have to knock him out, but you have to hit hard enough to trouble him. It looks like there's no way that Eremeyev can win this fight unless 
something terrible happens to Arthur's defence because it's just a sustained, systematic beating here that Arthur's dishing out and it's quality. More blood from the left eye of Aramaev and uh, there's much less coming back from him now. Larry O'Connell looking a little bit more seriously on Aramaev. He's hurt by that body shot. Uppercut follows in. Can Arthur stop Aramaev quicker than world-class Philip Undu? Because that would be something. There's nothing coming back from Aramaev. And Arthur seems to know when to pick the pace up. You know, I thought we'd be looking at seven or eight rounds before Arthur would be in this position. So really, after the, the first round, he got himself into the driving seat and he hasn't budged from there. Under total control, it's not even competitive now. The concentration on Alex Arthur's face. Such a mature man for 23. Got his little son, Alex Jr. now. You get the impression that he learned so much from his illustrious amateur career. And that will put him in very good stead for the professionals. But back comes Aramaev. He sucks it all up. But surely, surely, he can't keep taking these precise, accurate blows. Again, left to the body. And that was a walk in the park for Arthur. A very, very one-sided round. And Nikolai Eremeyev looks almost finished in that corner. There's Philip Fondue. Also with him, Zimin Vichatelek. They came with hope that they could get through this. Larry O'Connell's gone to see Eremeyev in the corner. And I wonder whether they want to see much more. They're not. They're pulling their man out. It's over at the end of round number five. Alex Arthur beats Nikolai Eremeyev quicker than the South African Philip Undu did. There's his girlfriend, Alison, absolutely delighted. And Alex Arthur kisses his glove, takes in the applause, and we have an absolute golden boxing child from north of the border. Jim, you must be delighted with him. Yeah, first class performance. Didn't put a foot wrong. I expected him to beat Eremia, but didn't expect him to dominate him and dominate him so quickly. Nice to see Eremia's corner showing a little bit of compassion and doing the sensible thing. He wasn't in the fight. There were no signs he was going to get himself into the fight. The fight had ceased to become competitive. So when he reaches that stage, get a kid out of the air before he gets hurt. But really, total domination, domination from Alex Harper. Nine inside the distance wins, 11 unbeaten professional fights now for Alex Arthur and uh, let's get him in the ring for a British title because I think he's going to win that. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of round number five, referee Larry O'Connell has accepted the retirement of Nikolai Aramayev. Your winner, he's undefeated in 11 professional contests and is the new WBO Intercontinental Super Featherweight Champion from Edinburgh in Scotland, amazing Alex Arthur. Nice start for the Harrison stable, that is Peter Harrison, the dad of course, and it's Peter's son Scott who's in action in our top of the bill tonight in Glasgow, in the Glasgow half of our bill tonight, Scott Harrison against Victor Santiago for the interim WBO World Featherweight title. But how long before Alex Arthur is on his way into a major fight at world level? The only issue seems to be holding him back at the moment, but he loves the limelight, doesn't he? Has a little bit of star quality, Spencer, to go with the class. Paul, I said in the build-up this week, this guy's just done nothing but impress me again. he done the same thing, stepped up the calibre of opponent, and really turned it on. He's got an excellent array of shots, and, and as soon as he started going through the gears, he just systematically took his opponent apart. Do you get the idea he enjoys himself in there? He loves it, Paul, he loves it. He, <laughs> what, what makes stars is, you know, he's as good outside the ring as he is in. And, I mean, this kid really is a, a bright star for the future. And at just 23 years of age, 
It's all in front of him. Adam's going to have a word with him, I think. Congratulations, Alex Arthur. Another belt around your waist. Another stepping stone, learning fight against uh, a tough man in Nikolai Romeyev there. Well, he's fought for a world title, Adam. He fought for Lepundo, one of the best super feathers in the world, in my eyes, and took him six rounds, so I equaled Indo's record. It seemed just to go very well from the opening bell. You kept your cool, you boxed behind your jab, and uh, he couldn't deal with your strength and accuracy. Well, no, nah, I mean, I, that's what I'm saying. You know, it's super featherweight. It's really hard for anybody to compete with me, I believe, in this country at least. And um, I'm just going to keep going strong, go back to the gym to work with my coach, Mike Keatley. I love you. You're the man. And um, just keep working hard and dig in. You said it was like going through a divorce by not getting the British oh. title fight tonight, but yeah. you showed that you have the professionalism to deal with the situation and uh, hopefully the British title next up. Well, it was imperative, Adam, that I just completely blanked what I had in my mind and just like focused on this fight. It was absolutely guided with the British title, you know, and uh, I, I hope that in the future I can either meet Alec Moon for the Commonwealth title as well or again Wally Lemond or maybe even the both of them on the same night, I don't know. You've won yours, Scott win his? Oh, definitely. <laughs> this is a team that ain't going to lose, man. <laughs> Lewis Tyson, quick prediction? Um, I'll go with Tyson. I'll go with Tyson. Thanks a lot, Alex. Well done tonight. Thanks.